everyone welcome back to the golf house if you've been here before if you're new welcome I'm so glad you're here I'm Jenny and today we're just gonna sew I know the couple weeks ago I said I wanted to do a pot holder tutorial and I hadn't gotten the chance to yet and today I don't feel like doing anything but staying in my sewing room so do you ever have days like that where you don't want to come out of your sewing room I do <laughs> So today, we're going to dig through this huge scrap bucket and figure out what scraps we're going to use to make some scrappy potholders. Okay, I don't know how you keep your scraps, <laughs> but mine goes in this tote, and uh, I can't even put the lid on this doggone thing, and it's busting out the seams. I need a bigger tote! Anyway, these are an array of scraps from sewing projects. So, I'm going to have to find um whatever scraps I'm gonna use but use finding projects that you can use um scraps on is excellent the only thing I can't use you know for pot holders would be this knitting stuff this silky stuff this is left over from a wedding dress I made actually a couple years ago and my granddaughter keeps pulling it out of like, when she sees it in the bottom because she likes it <laughs> Anywho, okay, what do I want to use? I have some cherry fabrics. Those are cute. We could pull those out. And these are already in strips, so that's nice. I have a lot of this. When you After you're quilting and get extra strips or making um, a lot of aprons, I've made uh, quite a few aprons like this. So anyway, leftover pieces. We'll pick those out, and I thought I just saw a blue version of that in here. Oh, I did. And, you know, your, your fabric scraps don't have to match each other either. These have cherries too, but totally don't match. Okay, what else? What else? I've got all sorts of stuff in here. Pinks, purple, I got paper in here. <laughs> that would be the grands. Snowflake material, fall material, ladybug, that's cute. Cookie sprinkle fabric. Okay, now that we've gotten some fabric scraps, the only specialty item that you're going to need other than batting. I have some plain old batting over here, if you can see it. Oh, it's kind of sitting in a pile right there. I'm going to cut that next. Um, is Insole Bright. Insole Bright you're going to want in the middle of your pot holder because it's heat resistant. It's almost got like a foil thing in the middle. It's like batting on both sides with a foil in the middle. Um, so you're going to want Insole Bright. I keep it on hand for stuff like this because sometimes uh, I make them as gifts, you know, uh, when somebody buys a house or gets married and, and I'll make aprons. I sometimes make pot holders with them and I make myself holiday pot holders. So, anywho, it's just kind of nice to have on hand and it's pretty inexpensive. I think it's like $1.99 or $2.99 a yard, something like that. Anyway, so you've got your scraps picked out. Um, next thing we're going to do is... We're going to cut our insole bright into the size that we want our pot holder. Now I'm going to make um, eight by eight pot holders. I think eight by eight is good. So I've already cut it into an eight inch strip um, width wise. So I am going to find my eight inch mark. And if you don't have a cutting mat and rotary cutter, you can certainly just, you know, cut it out with scissors. Not a big deal. I just uh, love my rotary cutter. <laughs> so basically, I guess I could have pressed a little hotter. Our pot holders, eight by eight, this size. I am gonna do the same thing with uh, my batting. We're working with just the batting, and I'm gonna make two pot holders. So I have two pieces of batting. My insole bright is over there. My insole bright is already cut. Um, we need to cut these in a sort of strips. They don't have to be perfect strips. In fact, don't make them perfect. Just want them to be at least long enough to cover your pot holder. So um, at least eight inches and I'm not even gonna... You don't want them to be too wide. I do know that because if they are... What is going on with this blade? This is a new blade. I just put it on. 
Where's my other one? Ugh. Rotaries. We'll do this blade. Anywho, you don't want these to be too um, wide because then they take up too much room and you're going to get less fabric in there. So, I'll cut a couple strips of that one off. Um, let's get a couple strips of this orange. And wow, uh, you might have to run your iron across these. And I have this little tiny iron. I need to get a different one. Um, this one is brand new, but A, it doesn't get that hot, and I hate this plug thing. So, I don't know if you have an, a little iron, mini iron that you like to use. Um, I do not like this one. There's not even a brand on here. I'm going to get a new one. So I'm not going to recommend this because this plug thing gets in the way. Anyhow, I just wanted to straighten this out just a smidgen. This board, though, super nice to have so I don't have to get up. I can just stay at my um, sewing machine. So, again, not measuring. I don't want any of my strips to be perfect. Might as well just take this last strip too and put three of those. I like orange. I'm just gonna cut the fold off of this. Um, this is what I like about making these kind of pot holders that there's just no nothing has to be exact, and I'm gonna show you what I mean. It's all just kind of scrappy. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. If I need more strips, I'll do more strips. But starting out, we're going to start out with a one piece here. And I'm going to do it on the diagonal. So I am going to run a quarter inch stitch across here. And actually, i got to flip it over. <laughs> I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to run my quarter inch stitch right along the side of this. If you need to um, pin this into place, you can totally put a few pins in here. Again, the beauty of scrappy pot holders. There's no measuring, no nothing. I like it. Okay, this is a little bit long. You can leave it on and cut it all at once, but if it's completely in your way, you can snip the ends off. Now, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> I could tell if you could see what I'm doing here. I need a new camera. Okay, and then you take this and you just finger press it over. And then I am going to take this, and this isn't very even, but I don't really care. I'm going to stick this over this. like so and I am going to do it again running a quarter inch stitch down I am gonna put a couple pins in here to hold it okay
Okay, you see where I'm getting at with this scrappy look. And then... And actually, I am going to take my scissors and cut some of this off. I'm going to cut this bend off. Okay. And finger pressing down. You don't want to like stretch it, but just finger press it down. And then we are going to go on to the next strip. And like I said, you know, I am not picky about sizes. Some people are. As long as you, when you're doing your stitch, you're catching it in there. That's all I care about. It works out just fine. Okay, next. If you do super thin strips, you can get a ton of different colors in here. So, just depending on how you want it, what you like. some of these scraps out. I'm going to finish sewing these strips on and then I'll show you the next step. But in the meantime, I got to go turn my oven on and preheat it. I'm in the middle of making bread. Okay, I have one side done. I know it looks terrible right now, but it will be cool when it's done. <laughs> it's all very scrappy. I'm going to wait to iron it until I'm completely done. So we're going to start on the next side and for the next side you're you're really doing the same exact thing. So I'm going to flip it over this way and I am going to repeat my pattern. And again, I'm just going to be sewing quarter inch. Put my pin in. Had to go check on my bread. It wasn't quite risen enough. <laughs> you know, I'm always doing double duty. <laughs> Canning, sewing. A lot of times when my canners are uh, coming down from pressure, I come in here and start sewing. And when you're sewing, you don't have to do a back stitch to lock it in. And you're going to sew starting from over your batting. And you're going to sew right off of it into your scrap. Because we're going to put an edge on here. So, And I'm going to start again with my next. So when I'm done with the rest of these, I'll be back. Okay, I have all my pieces sewed on. And as you can see, it looks like a huge mess. <laughs> Now, oh, I want to mention too, this is like a super easy way to, to make a scrappy pot holder. If you want to measure and cut all of these even and make sure that they're straight when you sew them, you totally can do that. Now, I kind of like it this little wonky way. You're never going to get two the same. You'll have a unique pot holder. But however you like to do it, um, I'm going to take this over to the big iron and give it a good steam press because we're going to cut it. Now I'm just pressing, not moving my iron around. And 
in the meantime, uh, back to the cutting board. <laughs> we need to trim this up. So I am going to line this up, make sure it's And you want to trim off all this extra fabric. If you don't have a rotary cutter and a mat, you can totally just use scissors. Um, but I will say, having a rotary cutter and a mat is so much easier for sewing. And this one I love because it's portable, and if you flip it, Bam! There's an ironing board. It's called a cut and press. You can get them in different sizes to sit by your sewing machine. Um, I like this size. Ooh, got a little, a little take along there uh, because it's easy to sit next to my sewing machine. So there's my cute pot holder. This is what it will look like. I'm gonna need a fabric to go along the back, so I'm gonna need to cut an eight by eight piece out. And here is my insole bright. So I'll be putting my insole bright there. And then I'm going to put another piece of fabric over the top, and then I'm going to sew them together. Then we're going to put an edging on. Okay, I have cut out an orange back for my pot holder. This is kind of a summery pot holder. And I, I just want to sew the layers together, so I'm going to sew as close to the edge as I possibly can. I'm going to try to go more of an eighth of an inch. Also, make sure you, you um, backstitch <clears throat> at the beginning and the end. I don't know if I said that. I'm terrible at do, uh, <laughs> giving sewing tutorials. Okay, so the base part of our pot holder is done. And I can trim off this little excess here. Okay. Next thing we want to do is make our do our binding. You can make bias tape or we can just use ready-made bias tape. Ready-made bias tape is the easiest, which would make this really you could do a set of pot holders in 1 hour. I have some orange bias tape and that is just um extra wide double folded bias tape you can buy or you can make it. I make a lot of bias tape. Um, but to save time and to show you that this is a quick pot holder, no measuring, no nothing. This is totally beginner easy pot holder. So we are going to start out like this and I'm just going to sew a quarter inch along and then I'll show you what we're going to do when we get to the corner. And I'm going to backstitch here. About one inch from the edge, we are going to need to fold our bias tape this way so that we get a nice corner. And then back. You gotta get it just right. <laughs> and it's easier if you use one of these to kind of hold it as you go. It's 
So make sure you got a nice corner. And then we're going to continue on. Again, we're near the corner. Actually, I think I went too far. I gotta back up. Okay. Okay, got to give myself plenty of room. I'm terrible at that. I always have to back up. Okay. And cut. Sorry, from this angle you can probably see what a mess I have back there. <laughs> and if you wanted to put a hanger on, I forgot to mention put a hang we could put a hanger on it. I I don't usually use them. I don't hang them up, but and we're going to have to press out our edges. And this is going to be a chore because normally when you sew this on, you leave a gap and then sew them together and I don't know why I didn't didn't do it that way. Oh well. This is an easy beginner one hour pot holder, so you don't have to know all that just to make a pot holder and I'll tell you what um, this is a great beginner pot holder and you know sewing is a great homesteading skill to have I'm gonna use this to poke my edges out this thing is made by clover I love this thing but we're gonna poke out the edges here make it a square pot holder <laughs> as intended you have to work with it. It takes a minute to get all those out. Okay, I've got all my edges poked out. I'm going to go to my other side, and I just want to kind of iron and press where I'm going to sew. And we can use Wonder Clips, too, especially right here where I messed up. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to clip that in. And when we sew, we're going to go over there 
and sew along the edge right here on this side. So we want to make sure that we're going to catch this in there. And when we're sewing it, we're going to have to be careful to make sure that we are getting that, ooh, that corner's not out as far as I want it. On that side there. Okay. And then when you come to the corners, you're going to want to make sure that one is tucked under the other so it looks good. I guess I don't really need to iron it. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew right on the very edge along here. If you want to flip this over more so that you don't even see that edging, you can do that. It just depends on how you want it. and our pot holder is done. You can make these any size you want. If you want them smaller than eight inches, you could do six inch pot holders. Um, depends on what you like, but easy scrappy pot holder. Sewing is a good homesteading skill to have. And if you don't have extra fabric laying around, you know, not everybody sews and quilts a lot, but you know, maybe you are interested in making your own products. Um, you can use old shirts for this, old clothes, anything that you've got. Um, Goodwill, oh, you can totally go to Goodwill. You can buy clothes and use those for fabrics or sheets or whatever you, whatever you can find that um, you can use the fabric from. It's a good way to transform old shirts. I've sewn it all together and then there's my back. For this one, I'm making the bias tape. So I'm making my own bias. You can sew it on the bias right here if you prefer. I'm not going to. I'm just going to do it straight. I don't really think it makes that big of a difference. You can press it out if you want. I'm just going to finger press it. And I'm going to finger press this open. and then fold it. Okay, so I've already ironed my bias. So my bias is ironed this way. I just wanted to put my put my stitch in. So what I am going to do is pick up my pot holder. I'm going to put the bias on like this. I'm going to leave this right here. I'm going to start stitching right here and leave this open. I need about an inch. So I am going to backstitch here.
I'm going to stop. Pull this out. And now I'm going to bring these two up and sew them together. extra off here. This one is <clears throat> just a tiny bit. I just got it just a tiny bit too long. So I'm just going to sew just under that line. Okay, I'm going to continue sewing on. Yeah, turn them right side up. You know what? I'm going to clip clip all my corners. Especially that one with the hanger. Make sure you don't clip your stitching. If you clip your stitching, you're going to have a hole. Okay. I'm going to pop all these out, all my little corners. Making sure that you're, um, wherever you're going to stitch, you're going to catch your, your binding. There you have it. There's my other pot holder. One with a little hangy, one with none. You can do them however you want. Um, <laughs> this is kind of nice because you don't have to measure anything other than your square. And they're quick sews. Okay, so I joined this little um, sewing. It's like a fat quarter club and it is through Annie's and Annie's is I think one of the oldest um, kit clubs there are, one of the first ones um, for sewing, like a sewing of the month. You can do them for quilting blocks, you can do them for fat quarters, you can do them for the bigger sewing boxes. Um, this one happens to be from Annie's and this one is inexpensive and more affordable than the rest also. Um, this one I think is about $25 a month and the first one you get 50% off from. You can find the coupon online. Okay, so this is what is in my little fat quarter. Let's see. Oh, cute quilt pattern. So this one does come with a, um, a block pattern. And this is the block. So that is neat because you can make a bunch of these and make them into a quilt or place. This one's a placemat, um, whatever you want to make. I love quilt block patterns. And this one is quilters tips and general instructions. That's cool. And then a little note from Annie's. And what is this? Oh, a little fat quarter club. So it's got, this is called the build your stash club. These are cute. So they kind of pick the fabrics that they're going to send to you. So this cute flowered one, blue flower. That's pretty. I love the assortment. I absolutely love this one. Faith, family, blessings. How cute. 
So beautiful fabric choices, super exciting. So if you're interested in this, I will try to find the information and leave it in the description box below for you. And as well as everything that I used today for my little pot holders. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. Um, if you haven't started following me on Instagram, you can follow me there at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all my recipes at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.